This is Shaz. This isn't my long, long, long way to video of John Wayne Gacy. Thank you to everyone who subscribed and our new subscribers. And thank you for all the comments and feedback. We really love getting your feedback. Also, can I say a thank you to all our supporters on Coffee and thank you to our members on our YouTube fam. We really, really appreciate your help. It's really appreciated. So, this is about John Wayne Gacy. I'm sure no, most of you know about the case. He killed 33 people and got lethal injection, but this is just a quick overview of the case i've not gone complete into detail but thank you very much let's get into it john wayne gacy was convicted for 33 murders mainly men and boys he was only convicted to die for 12 of the victims and for the others he was given life in prison he buried most of the bodies under the crawl space under his house one in the garage and another one in the driveway. Gacy led a rather respectable life. He was involved in charitable work. He entertained kids in a hospital as he was dressed as a clown named Pogo. But he was also a sadist. He tortured kids. He killed them. It was torture, basically. He was a complete and utter sadist. He got off on it. On December the 11th, 1978, 15-year-old boy Rob Peace disappeared from the drugstore where he worked. Gacy had actually been there, finished remodeling a job. In the first search, even though a lot of incriminated evidence was found, a roll of film belonging to Rob Peace was seized in the initial first search. When police required a second search warrant, that was when all the bodies were recovered. They were all found. Three were found first, and then more, and then more, and then more. He had gotten away with it for years. Gacy also helped police officers locate other bodies in the crawl space. He told police how he had done it with strangulation, handcuffed the, his victims first, and then strangled them. Well, as I expect with most murders and murderers, Gacy recanted his confession. He didn't even testify at the trial. All he did was enter a plea of insanity, which no one believed anyway. John Wayne Gacy's early life. He had two sisters, one younger than him, one older than him. His father was a bit of a brute to him. He used him physically and mentally, he'd call him dumb, stupid, sissy, mama's boy, said he'd grow up to be gay. But that's no reason to actually do what he did. Gacy suffered a head injury when he was 11, he was struck in the forehead by a swing. The only thing is, he had a blood clot and it wasn't discovered until he was 16. Now, I've read this quite a lot on other serial killers who have had a, a blow to the forehead. I wonder if a blow to the head could activate the serial killer gene inside them. They only discovered this clot because he started to have blackouts. But he was given medication and dissolved the clot away. After attending various high schools, he dropped out completely and he never graduated either. He ran off to Las Vegas for a few weeks. He got a job working with the ambulance service and then he he got one working in a mortuary and that lasted for a few months. But one night when Gacy was alone, he got into a coffin of a teenage deceased body, got into the coffin and started caressing and holding the body. Gacy then said that he sensed a sudden shock. The next day he returned to Chicago and he enrolled in Northwest Business College and later graduated. After he graduated with the business school he worked at a few jobs. He worked at a shoe company following the graduation. 
he was transferred to Springfield, Illinois. That was where he met his first wife, Marilyn Myers. Gacy and Marilyn got, got married in September 1964. Marilyn's father owned a number of KFC franchises. He offered Gacy a manager job in the Waterloo, Iowa, Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant. The Gacy's settled in Waterloo where they started a nice little family of their own. They had one son, one daughter. But uh, even though Gacy worked hard at his job and they seemed happy and loving, Gacy's dark side was starting to emerge. Gacy even cheated on his wife a lot, if you can believe that. I can't understand how he did that to his wife and kids. He opened up a like a boys club in his basement where he'd allow the Waterloo boys to drink, get high. He made sexual advances towards them too. Gacy's middle class life came crashing down in 1968 when two boys aged 15 and 16 accused him of sexually assaulting. Obviously, you know, Gacy denied the charges. However, he did hire someone to uh, beat up one of his accusers and the guy that was caught told all and Gacy was arrested. Gacy was convicted of sodomy and sentenced to 10 years in Iowa State Prison. But then they let him out after he only serves only 18 months. After Gacy was in prison, his wife filed for divorce. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't? He never ever saw the kids again. He did say he didn't want to see them again. That's Gacy for you. Anyway, he moved back to Chicago to live with his mum, but he managed to keep the uh, record of his prison stay away until, of course, the police uncovered it when they investigate his latest murders. After living with his mum for a bit, Gacy managed to buy a house with her financial help. And it's the house we're all familiar with, 8213 West Summerdale Avenue. The house, though, had a four foot deep crawl space. And that was, of course, where he buried most of his victims. I find this a little strange because in 1971, February, Gacy was charged with disorderly conduct. It was a, the victim was a teenage boy, but the, he tried to force him into sex. The complaint was dropped though because the boy didn't attend court. However, the parole board didn't hear of this and he was discharged from parole in the October 1971. They had quite a few chances to stop him actually. They, they could have stopped him. I mean, on the 22nd of June, again, he gets arrested for charged with battery. Young man's walking down the street. Gacy flashed a badge at him, pretended to be a cop, told him to get in, and then forced him into sex. But again, the charges were dropped. Then in June 1972, Gacy married a friend from his teenage years, Carol Hoff. She had two daughters from a previous relationship. They moved into his house in Summerdale Avenue. At the time, Gacy had started his PDM, Painting, Decorating and Maintenance as it was called. But um, the marriage didn't last long, it started to deteriorate mainly because of Gacy. His life, his, the way he's kept bringing young boys around, the way he kept bringing pornography into the house. They got divorced in March 76. In 1975 and 76, he served on the township lighting committee and he eventually earned the title of precinct captain, which is probably how he obtained a badge. He also met and was photographed with Rosalind Carter, who um, also happened to be in town for a parade that was happening that day on the 6th of May. Gacy was directing the parade for the third year in a row made your friends, you know, with everyone. But to Rosalind Carter, she autographed a t-shirt saying to John Gacy, best wishes. In the picture, Gacy's wearing like an S-pin. It's um, 
a special clearance by the Secret Service. But during the, how the search of Gase's house, the photo caused a major embarrassment to the Secret Service. In July of 1975, one of Gase's employees, Johnny Bukovich, disappeared. Bukovich had recently quit because Gacy owed him some back pay money that he never got. The, his parents urged the police to check out Gacy, but they never did and his disappearance went unsolved. It makes you wonder what exactly we are paying the police for. In December 1976, another employee of Gacy's, Gregory Godzik, disappeared. His parents again asked the police to investigate Gacy but again they didn't pursue it or discover his criminal record. A lot of lives could have been saved if this was caught earlier. Then in 1977 John Zitch, an acquaintance of Bukovic, Godzik and Gacy, disappeared later. However one of Gacy's employees was arrested for stealing some gasoline. The car actually belonged to John Zitch. Gacy said that he'd sold the car to him before he left town, but of course the police never pursued the matter. Gacy started digging holes in his crawl space. He got tired of it, so he hired one of his employees, David Cram, to do it. David Cram actually lived with Gacy at the time, until one night Gacy threatened to rape him. He let Cram locked himself in his room and moved out. Not all of Gacy's victims died though. Jeffrey Rignall was lured into the car by Gacy and chloroformed. Back at the house at Summerdale he was raped and tortured and then he dumped his body in Lincoln Park but police drew a blank. Also, another kid in December 1977, a 19 year old, complained that Gacy kidnapped him. Bloody hell, kidnapping as well at gunpoint and forced him into sex, but again, Chicago police took no action. Why? Rob Peast, the last victim who was killed by Gacy, and also the boy who stopped John Gacy. Now, he disappeared on December the 11th, 1978, from the Des Plaines Pharmacy where he worked. Thing was, Peace told a co co-worker he was going out to the street to talk to a guy about a job but Death Plains Police did what Chicago Police failed to do and that was check a background on Gacy and that's when they discovered the sodomy conviction. The first search of Gacy's house took place on December the 13th but it turned up some quite a few suspicious items, a 1975 school ring, driver's license for other people handcuffs, a 2 by 4 wood with like holes drilled in e either ends, a syringe, clothes that were obviously too small for him to wear. Detectives also noticed an odour coming from the crawl space, a smell like you could never ever forget. Further investigation revealed Godzik's disappearance and the high school ring that was found was traced back to John Zitch. But from Gacy's second wife, that's when they learned of Bukovic's disappearance and they investigated then what other police departments failed to do. Can you people please correct me on this if I am wrong? But um, I discovered that one of Gacy's employees on the 21st of December 1978 told the police that Gacy had confessed to more than 30 murders. Gacy was picked up on a uh, possession of um, marijuana, supposedly that he'd given to someone. The police obtained another search warrant for Gacy's house and that was where they found the human bones in the crawl space. He was told by the police that he was now facing murder charges. Only, even though Gacy confessed to 25 to 30 murders and told investigators that he 
buried them in the crawl space elsewhere on his property, but he also threw at least between four and five more victims in the Des Plaines rivers. One of them was Rob Peast. He also drew the police a diagram to show where all the bodies were. He preyed on the vulnerable, more like teenagers, runaways, misfits, male prostitutes, all sorts. He would promise them like, he'd offer them money for either sex or the promise of a job. Once he got them back to his house, he'd restrain them in handcuffs. Then he would put a rope around the neck with a piece of wood through it, turning it over and over until the collapse. The only victim that was actually not strangled was Johnny Bukovic. He was stabbed to death by Gesa. He went back to search for more remains. I mean, for the next four months or so, just more and more human remains just kept coming. There was reporters, TV new crews, and as astonished onlookers watched, and 29 bodies were found in the crawl space and on other parts of the property between December 1978 and 1979. And so on the 6th of Feb 1980, Gacy goes trial. However, he pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, but that plea was rejected outright. But his lawyer tried to say that Gacy had moments of temporary insanity where at the time of each individual murder, but then regained his sanity before and after to law and dispose of victims. That doesn't add up. It just doesn't, not to me. I don't know about to you guys, but not to me. Gacy once made a joke by saying that the only thing he was guilty of is running a cemetery without a license. But the Gacy's defense, one of the his defense, tried to claim that all 33 murders were accidental death. Accidental death. This was really thrown out when the county coroner just said, this is impossible. But he was found guilty of all 33 murders and sentenced to death. And so, on the 10th of May 1994, Gacy was executed at Statesville Correctional Centre by lethal injection. His execution was a minor media sensation but large crowds were gathering for parties and outside the penitentiary and you had vendors selling gacy merchandise the crowd all cheered though at the moment when gacy was pronounced dead gacy did not express one bit of remorse not one little bit and his last words were kiss my ass which he said as he was being left to the death chamber. The execution took 18 minutes to complete. That was because the IV tube that led into Gacy's arm became clogged and they had to put new ones in. It took 18 minutes to complete. William Kunkel, one of uh, the chief prosecutor at Gacy's trial, said after that he got a much easier death than any of his victims, which is true. He got an easier death than he deserved, which was true. But the important thing was, he paid for his crimes with his life. A life for a life. In his execution, Gacy's brain was taken away to be examined, but no abnormalities were found. So in total, Gacy killed 33 young men and boys. He buried 27 of them under the crawl space in his house, another one in the garage and another one in his driveway, and four more he threw in the river. Eight of his victims couldn't be identified. 
That is, until quite recently, when the Cook County Sheriff, Tom Dart, ordered these bodies to be exhumed so to see if they could be identified through DNA. Three of the victims have been identified. William George Bundy was identified in 2011. James Brian Hackinson from Minnesota, he was identified in 2017. And quite recently, this year, Francis Wayne Alexandra was identified 2021. So far, that brings it up to date with Gacy's murder victims. How, how many more? We'll never know. Please think there were more victims who weren't found, but we'll never know. Gacy took that secret to the grave with him. I found these videos. They're just a few clips from certain interviews that Gacy gave in prison. I just thought I'd put them on here and comment on them about what he's saying, as Denny and I usually do. The clowning was relaxation for me. I enjoyed entertaining kids. Like some people are, uh, you know, they they unwind in different ways, either, either we're going out drinking or that. I could put on clown makeup and I was relaxed. So here Gase is talking about relaxation and feeling free, dressing up as a clown, putting on his clown makeup. But there has been reports that Gacy actually killed while wearing this clown outfit. And I enjoyed doing it. I it was uh, it, uh, twice. A, it was only twice a month that I did it. Yeah, this I was, was not using for a lure to to draw kids to you. As uh, as uh... no. Okay, now I don't believe that for a second. Of course he did. We would visit uh, different hospitals and uh, entertain the children there, and we didn't entertain them with handcuffs or anything like that. At first, I thought, why use handcuffs to entertain a child? But then I realized that you can use handcuffs because you can get out of them. Sorry, I'm just being stupid at the moment. All we used was uh, balloon animals and small toys and stuff like that. But we also did parades. And in the summertime, like on 4th of July, I used to be in four parades in one day. I've always told people when, when I got into clown makeup, I regressed into childhood. It was fun being a clown because you could you, you could be yourself or, or just let yourself go and act a fool. He doesn't just love playing the fool. He loves being a simpering coward as well. You could be slapstick and funny and have a good time. That's why I always enjoyed clowning. Clowning has taken a bad name I, because of what they've used in my case. He's got no one to blame but himself. He's the one who brought the bad name on clowns because of what he did in his clown outfit. I, I have a lot of things that I've forgotten that I can't remember. For instance, I can go back to my childhood and stuff and I still remember that, but yet you can, I can go into the 70s and there are a lot of things I can't remember. Don't you just love selective memory? You can't remember anything from the 70s. How convenient. The same thing with the victims. I've looked at all of, I don't know if, if you notice here, we got pictures of every one of the victims here. And believe it or not, for the last 12 years, I've studied these photos of the victims. All right, I have a massive big problem with this because he should not have those victims' photos. It's like he's getting off on looking at them again. And there is no... Uh, we, we have a shot of all of the victims together here. And uh, when you look over at the, the photos, I have no recollection of any of them. Never met them. So he's now saying that he's never even met them. He's, he doesn't even know them, they've never even worked. Come on! He killed them because he wanted to. He got off on it and now he's saying he can't even remember. There is no emotion in him. And we've gone over this more than once. They're just names and faces. So that's all they meant to him. And when you, when you look at them, uh, the thing of it is, we took it a step further. We went into their backgrounds. I wanted to know where they were at, what schools they attended, who they hung out with, and what kind of activities they were into. And that's what we dug up on each one of the victims. But still, there is no association. None of them never worked for me. None of them... So now he wants to know all about their lives, about what schools. Isn't it a bit late for that? They never went to any places that I ever hung around because I didn't hang, hang around that many places unless you were involved in politics. 
or, or you, if you were involved in clowning, then I might have ran into you. But there's no way I could have run into any of them. So he's also saying he's never been to those places. Well, he knows what he did. This is the end of my Gacy video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope it's, you like the video. Hope it's been informative. If you've, I've got anything wrong, please feel free to comment and let me know. I like to enjoy your feedback. Please don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and Odyssey. Also, you can support us by joining Coffee or you can join our YouTube fam. The links are in the description. You get access to exclusive content and live streams. Denti and I will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. See ya.